Okay, so welcome. Um, we're going to hear some thoughts from our Anglican delegation on the key messages for our uh, policy paper. So the first, first key message is that the climate emergency is a global threat that requires a global response, imagination, and the long view. It can't be solved if countries are caged by nationalistic self-interest or short-term political cycles. Profound changes in attitudes and ways of seeing are needed. This is something the Anglican Communion and other faith actors offer. Archbishop Julio, could you provide some thoughts, personal reflection on that? The first thing that comes to my, my mind is the way in which society has created such an impact on some people. It is true that we live in a time of crisis, but the time of crisis has helped us to move away, in a way, from this individualistic way of seeing things and solving things. People of faith understand that we are related one with another. And because of our relationship with one with another, we also remember the relationship that we have with God. We cannot think only of ourselves. I remember what, is, what has happened to us during the situation with the pandemic. Everybody was willing to share whatever little they had with those who did not have anything. If I look at what happened with the pandemic, and I understand what is happening in the time of crisis, we are in this together. No country, therefore, should think that they can go out there and negotiate by themselves and for themselves. But it's a matter of coming together and thinking of the common good, not only my personal experience and my personal benefit, but the benefit of us all, because we're all included in this. Yes, uh, it is a very important key message. As, uh, as we serve in 10 different countries in North Africa and the whole of Africa, uh, you have floods in some of the countries we serve. You have droughts in other countries. You have floods in Chad, when people have to leave home and live in tents. And you have droughts when people are really dying of hunger in Somalia. Uh, it's, a, it's a message of cooperation working together. In Egypt, we have uh, Muslim leaders and Christian leaders coming together. And we agree uh, that uh, Christianity and Islam, uh, both religions, really encourage their followers to be uh, doing all they need to do to uh, keep the environment and to have a clean environment to live in. Uh, a lot of the teaching in the scripture uh, about the Creator all the uh, singing and the psalms of uh, the heaven declares the glory of the Lord. All this encourages us to really appreciate God's creation. Uh, it's a key message of working together, to find a way to express uh, how to really uh, our communities to be united in this. Yes, the crisis affected all around the world. Uh, in, a, in a different way. Um, uh, ways of uh, looking at, you know, the, with the beauty and the creation that God has given us to share and and live joyfully. Um, of course, there's hurricanes and rising sea levels. There's um, people that have been uh, homeless everywhere else. Um, in prayerfully, I think we bring back the community together as we, as a church, in the Anglican community that. Um, that has been a very vital importance of prayer, of bringing our communities together and, and live in that harmony and peace and hoping and praying that God will provide and he will provide at the end, at the end of time. It might take a long time. People sometimes get a little bit, uh, you know, hopeful in a way that it will happen straight away, but God's got his own time to be able to serve all of us um, faithfully at the end of time. Um, whenever I talk about the situation of climate crisis, 
uh, the very first thing that I spoke on the other day also is the our responsibility as towards of the mother earth. Uh, the maps, the geographical boundaries have been created now. But when God created, he created earth, he created human beings. And I think, um, I believe so that when we are facing a time of crisis, because climate change is not just confined to some countries, it's a global threat, it's affecting people around the globe. And uh, we need to set aside all the political differences and uh, we need to become one. Um, I would quote an example uh, when there was Corona pandemic on its peak in the year 2020. And India was facing so much because uh, millions of people were dying. Uh, there was complete uh, nuisance around. Pakistan sent 50 um, ambulances to the aid of India immediately. And that was a very beautiful example of uh, having uh, intercultural, it's you know, India Pakistan culture is exactly the same, but uh, inter country, you know, two countries uh, coming uh, together. And uh, similarly, the situation when we had floods recently in Pakistan, uh, the Anglican Church. The, they were uh, in, in uh, I would quote uh, name, names and I can uh, tell, but it's a long story. So the Anglican Alliance, they came together and they, they were writing us emails. They were uh, contacting us that let us know what you need uh, and we can send you the aid. We can help you with the funds so that you can uh, provide to the flood victims in Pakistan. And I think this is the role of church. This is the role of nations when we are facing a similar thing, a similar crisis in our own region. So it's important that we should all come uh, at one place, set aside all the differences and work for a common goal, which is to eradicate the effects of climate change and bring climate justice as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stick to...